John here grabbing a brisket, and we are cooking a brisket today. So we just got it done. If you didn't already see our other videos on seasoning, injecting, trimming, go back and check those out. So we just put this baby on here, and whether you're cooking it on a pellet smoker or an egg or an offset or whatever it is, for us, we do between 250 to 275 and just hold it there uh, pretty much the whole time. So we'll come back in probably 45 minutes or so and see if we need to add a little mop sauce or a little spreads, keep the moisture on that to so really build a nice crust. All right guys, so I checked it every about 40 minutes and I didn't think it was quite ready for a spritz yet. So I waited a little longer, it's probably been about an hour. You can see it starts to dry up just a little bit on the, on the, uh, on the seasoning there. You can let it dry and then you give it a little spritz. You can use all kinds of stuff. We're using a juice here today. Let it uh, dry out and then get wet and then dry out. And get, that's what creates that bark that we all hope to achieve. All right, so we hit the time that we need to wrap the brisket up. So you guys move it a little closer and take a look. Nice color. Bark setting up a little bit. So uh, brisket's ready. Um, it's got. Some, some good color to it. Normally, we we'll probably maybe take a little bit longer, but today is getting short and we're ready to eat. So we got to speed this little process up. Uh, we're doing the Texas foil or Texas crunch, I uh, guess you could say. And this is the way I like to wrap. Uh, I wrap with a uh, each piece going different direction. Uh, little pieces up, and then a little spritz or spray. James. There you go. I'm a big fan of just spraying down right now. It's already going to steam inside, but I'm just giving a little extra moisture for that thing just, just to kick start, right? So, throw pieces over. Yeah, if you guys want to, you have any of that leftover like beef broth that you injected with, save it. It'd be a good opportunity for you to just dump in there and just had a little extra uh, moisture. As Jan said, it's kind of a kickstarter to the au jus that you're fixing to build. And that's with beef broth, not if you're doing one of them other pre-made mar or that's injections. Exactly. That's right, John. Something else is that some solid beef broth. Just, just look at what we're doing right here. One is I fold over uh, the piece, and then I'm, I'm folding everything up. If you fold down, if you have a leak in your tinfoil, it's going to uh, basically run out. Mm. So make sure you're folding everything up. Boom. Hey guys, James grabbing the brisket. So uh, the brisket is almost done. So we're, we're fixing a probe button to see where we're at. Sorry about the lighting out here. It's, it's pretty dark, so we're gonna swoop in and try to see what the temperature is. Bust out the uh, handy dandy thermal works. Two oh five, two oh seven. That's money. Let's check the point. 204. Get in there and see that. It's time to pull it. We'll pull it, rest it. Gonna be good, dude. So we got the brisket pulled. Looks good. We're gonna let it rest for approximately maybe an hour and a half or so before we start slicing into it. Um, if you don't, then you're going to run the risk of it being super hot and the, all the juices and stuff are just going to start flowing out of the brisket as you start cutting. And then at the end, everything's going to be kind of like dryish or whatever. So we're going to, we're going to, right now we're in the process of uh, what they call venting. So we're going to vent the brisket. So we're letting all that steam just roll out of there. So once once the steam stops like uh, pouring out of there, then we'll kind of close it back up again, wrap a towel around it, put it in a cooler. If you have a Cambro, stick in a Cambro. 
if not, uh, make your own makeshift type deal. Wrap a towel around it. Put it in a cooler and just uh, let it chill for two hours or so. Uh, it will make a world of a difference if you do that. If not, like I mentioned earlier, you'll start cutting into it. It'll be tender. It'll be juicy. But you let that sit out for maybe uh, 20 minutes, it'll dry out. So, But right now, you do this process right here. Let it wait. It's almost the same as if you're going to cook a steak. So you cook a steak. Once you pull it off, you want to let it rest for maybe 5-10 minutes. If not, once you start cutting into it, all those juices just start pouring out of it. Next thing you know, you're just like chewing on shoe leather. And we don't want to chew on shoe leather. We want to chew on nice, tasty brisket that's tender and moist. So grabbing the brisket, guys. You guys stay tuned.